Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and this is the October benchmark test for the Galaxy S21. So on the left-hand side, we have the Exynos 2100, and on the right here, we have the Snapdragon 888. I'm just going to go through our normal benchmarks and just see how they're faring this month. So the Snapdragon got its update a couple of days ago, I'd say. I was actually away for a few days, and when I came back, it was sat waiting. So we've had a couple of updates in quick succession for the Snapdragon. So hopefully it will continue to keep up pace and get its updates a bit sooner. It was a bit odd how we had to wait until October for the September update, but hopefully, like I say, they're back on track and we can just uh, carry on benchmarking as we were every month before. Still no camera updates this month. So as I said last month, I think the camera tests have finished. What I have promised to do, however, is a final review of these two phones with a camera test, a battery drain test, and the benchmark tests all after doing a factory reset with the latest updates. So then you'll really know if you do pick up one of these after the launch date, whether you'll actually experience any better performance compared to if you had bought it and launch and just updated every month as we've done here. So here we're just running through the Geekbench CPU test. So I'll just skip to the end, we're nearly done and we'll just see how it compares to September's results. Okay, so the CPU benchmark is finished and amazingly, if we just start with the Exynos 2100 here, we've actually scored the best single and multi-core score we've ever had since the start of these tests. So that's a single core of 1,102 compared to last month's 1,068 and the multi-core score of 3,457 compared to last month's 3,263. So definitely an improvement over last month's anyway, but also, like I said, that is definitely the best score we've actually had for the Exynos 2100 since launch. It's a similar story for the Snapdragon here. We scored 105.5 for the single core, slightly lower than last month's 109.4 in September. Multi-core score for the Snapdragon, which is 3.356 compared to last month's 3.407. Like I say, single core a bit down on the Snapdragon, but Exynos, like I say as well, has also had the best score it's ever had since February at least. Okay, so I've let the phones cool down a bit now and I don't know why this Snapdragon does keep staying a bit warmer than the Exynos, but we're gonna run through the compute benchmark now and I'll skip to the end and we'll just see how they both compare. Okay, so the compute scores are in and similar to the CPU results, we've actually scored the best score ever on the Exynos 2100 here, 7,668. That compares to 7385 last month, but since launch, this is the highest we've ever received. And again, with the Snapdragon, a similar story. We've scored 4755 compared to last month's 4654, which is the best score that the Snapdragon has ever had since launch. I'll just scroll through the results and then we will move on to the Antutu test. Okay, so I've just popped the Snapdragon into the cooler just to cool it down a bit quicker. It was taking a while to get back down. Oh, it's just popped back up to 30. Now the room temperature is about 20 degrees at the moment, but the Snapdragon is consistently staying a bit warmer than the Exynos for some reason. Anyway, we're gonna move on to the Antutu benchmark now. And as you can see, we are now running version 9.1.8 on both. I've also updated the 3D package as well. So we're just gonna test again those last month's scores and just see how they both compare.
Right, so the Antutu benchmark is just finished and some very surprising results here. As you probably saw during the sped up version of the video there, the Exynos did actually take over the Snapdragon, which is the first time I've ever seen that happen. And it has now in fact taken over in terms of score as well. So we've got 741,839. And that does compare to 736,897 last month. And the Snapdragon has actually gone down a bit here to 737,317 compared to last month's 746,180. But the most interesting thing, as I said, is that the fact that the Exynos 2100 is now somehow beating the Snapdragon 888, which is the first time it's ever done it in Antutu since February. So we are seeing a bit of a theme here. So we can see the different scores between each section here as well. And again, as I was saying earlier, the Snapdragon does appear to be getting a lot hotter than the Exynos. So the Exynos peaked at 37.5 compared to 39.1 for the Snapdragon. So yeah, very interesting results here. And like I said, I've never seen the Exynos beat the Snapdragon in any Antutu test. So this is quite a turnout for the books. I'll let them cool down again now and we'll move on to the stress test next. I will just show you first of all that the processing speed is not turned on on either phone. So there's no funny business going on here. They are both still configured exactly the same. So anyway, we'll be back once they've cooled down and we'll move on to the stress test. Okay then, so I've tried my best to get them down to the same temperature, and we're just gonna have to start at 25 and 26. The Snapdragon, again, has taken a long time to actually uh, cool down for some reason. So these are the previous stress tests that we did last month, so that's what we're gonna be comparing with. And again, we're gonna do a 15 minute test and come back with the results and put them on the screen and compare them side by side. Okay, so the stress test has finished and the results are quite interesting indeed. So let's start off with the Exynos anyway. And as we can see here, I would say that the CPU performance has increased since September and we've got a more stable sort of 80% average maybe throughout the whole test. Whereas in September, we were still dipping down to 60 quite frequently. We do still dip to 60 a few times here in the October update, but overall I'd say it's a lot higher you know, 70 to 80 and peaking over 80%, which we only did a few times last month, but we have done many more times this month. So yeah, CPU performance wise, as the other tests have gone so far, as you've seen, we can see that the performance is definitely better. Okay, so looking at the CPU cores here, we can see it's a very similar story to last month. We're still not peaking much over two gigahertz, which is a bit of a shame. We do still wanna be able to see that, you know, 2.5 to 2.8 score but overall i'd say it's very similar to last month's just that the performance from these cores is better now looking at the september performance here for the snapdragon i, I don't know what's happened here but it's it's gone to an abysmal sort of 40 to 50 percent mark here which does seem to reflect what we were seeing in the standard benchmark and the geekbench so far now like I said as well, I've had issues cooling the phone down compared to the Exynos. It seems to be taking a lot longer to cool down. So yeah, that seems to be reflecting here in the performance of the phone itself. So it's quite easy to compare this to last month because we've gone from a pretty okay score of around sort of 80 to 90 and peaking at 100 quite frequently down to the early 40s and dipping below every now and again and peaking at around 60% performance. So that's a horrendous turnout there for the Snapdragon. Looking at the cores for the CPU as well, it's quite a sad story. We can see the throttling starts almost instantly here compared to last month's where we got back up to a sort of full speed on all cores. We've now dropped to a horrendous, you know, 1.9, 1.8 gigahertz for the main cores and around maybe 1.6 or 1.7 or some of the other cores. So I, this is really a shocking result here. As I mentioned earlier, the room temperature is around the same it was last month, around 19, 20 degrees. So it's not like it's baking hot in here. And if you compare that to the Exynos cores, the Exynos, although it is also being throttled quite poorly, 
is actually outperforming the 888 now. Now I'm sure we'll have some people saying that this is just Samsung purposely doing this to make sure that people are getting excited for the new Exynos 2200, but I can't imagine them doing that particularly considering the user base of the Snapdragon 888. Anyway, with all that doom and gloom, I'm going to let the phones cool down again and then we'll move on to the 3D Mark tests and see how they get on there. Okay, we're back again and the phones have now cooled down. We've come out of everything. So we're gonna go into the 3D Mark test. We'll start off with the wildlife as always. We'll just see how they both do. Okay then, so the wildlife has now finished and we can see the Exynos has a score of 5919, which compared to September score of 5895 is a nice little improvement there. Not by a huge amount, but an improvement overall. And the Snapdragon here has gone down to 5769 compared to last month's 5820. So again, a very similar thing to what we're seeing throughout these tests with the scores going down for the Snapdragon. Average frame rate 35.4 compared to 34.6. So I'm going to move straight on to the slingshot test now. And we'll come back at the end of this one. And hopefully they'll both be maxed out, but I have a feeling that the Snapdragon may not be. Okay, so this slingshot test has just finished and we are indeed still maxed out on the Exynos and we've gone down to 8,070 on the Snapdragon compared to 8,102 last month. So all around the Snapdragon is definitely performing at one of its worst, not its worst worst, but certainly one of the worst it has been since the release and not sure why that is. Obviously something has changed in the background, but it is a bit of a shame to see really because they were both performing pretty well. We can see here average frame rate between 23 and 119 on the Exynos compared to 25 and 94 on the Snapdragon. So let me know your thoughts down below on October's update. I did have someone comment on the September update video saying that they had noticed their Exynos had improved immensely in the October update and I'm happy to confirm that mine has also improved immensely. So it is really good to see that. You can also actually even see the battery comparison here. We both we started at 100% on both and we're now at 75 and 73. So all around the Exynos is absolutely decimating the Snapdragon this month. But obviously November is a new month and not too far away. So we'll be back again soon to see what November holds. But in the meantime, do leave any comments down below. Leave me your scores as well if you want to compare. And as always, I do update my site with the complete table of results so you can have a look at how they've been doing over the last few months and compare them to your own scores. Be sure to click the like button and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to say thank you, you can click on the join button and become a member. And again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.